For the year of 2022, I generated around $2.4 million in revenue selling on Amazon FBA, flipping name brand products with online arbitrage, buying stuff like Adidas sneakers, Legos from Kohl's.com, Target.com, Walmart, websites like that. So in this video, I'm gonna break down my revenue throughout the entire year, different lessons I learned, the sales month by month, and all that. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Let's get right in the video. We're here inside my screen and I got the full graph of day by day, month by month revenue for 2022. So it'll make a couple six figures in profit. Um, you guys like the video I did yesterday, breaking down my first seven figures on Amazon, my first year, six figures profit um, with that and everything. So I figured I'd do a whole breakdown video of 2022. Don't know why I didn't think of doing that um, prior and everything, but it should be good. Excited to do one of these for 2023 as well. A lot of lessons learned right here so we can see back in january of 2022 it was pretty straightforward right around like uh things like 95 or 100k in uh in revenue there right around like 15,000 profit the problem was is there's definitely a big slowdown in january so for those of you guys who watched the video from yesterday you know december is really big and then january is a lot harder basically get a lot of returns and uh and stuff like that but pretty business as usual um, in January of 2022, I was still, you know, pretty new to like having money. I just made 50,000 bucks profit for the first time. So there's a little bit of adjustment with how much velocity actually slows down that month. But January and February were pretty straightforward based on that. I had a couple like pretty big days on uh, on that. March was when stuff started to pick up again. I started to get into like a, a really good like productivity routine. Basically, I was um, like no phone between 8 a.m. and noon, basically, which is kind of what I'm doing now. So that's like been a really good thing. Um, for me and you guys can see like this is also you can see it starts to spike up in Jan in uh, March or right? that's also when I got a prep center basically which started to alleviate some of the work so you can see between January and March and April my sales really started to increase part of that was the prep center and part of that was just the market cycle basically in January and February it's pretty hard to buy OA products that are good because you're competing with a lot of people that bought stuff Black Friday and during holiday sales for really cheap and now their inventory is getting checked into fba it's not getting checked into fba during december because you know fba checking times are a little bit slow during december so on and so forth basically so you can see my sales really picked up between march and april and january february and that was um, prep center definitely just market timing that like some big sales started to happen in april which were huge for me basically and that that uh kicked off the momentum all the way through june one of the big sales that happened in april also happened in June. So I was able to get a bunch of good inventory in, uh, in there as well. And I think I did right around like 300 um, K rev in, uh, in April. It was a little bit less profitable than I want it to be right, uh, right there, but still right around like 10, 12%, not including cash back um, right there, which is pretty cool. And started to really, really take off and started to see some of that similar volume to Q4. Basically, the nice thing was I was able to do some of the similar numbers I had done to Q4 in a non-Q4 month, even with less volume, a lower ASP, et cetera, because I was getting better at sourcing and I had a lot more capital, right? So not only over time are you going to get better, but you're also going to have more capital. Your relationships are going to compound. It's just going to get overall easier to get higher outputs with similar inputs, basically. So I was kind of experiencing um, some of that basically into June right there. Now, July, my sales went down a little bit. This was when I started to make some of the mistakes I made last year and get a little bit speculative. I got a storage unit, started moving product in there that I was holding um, to go ahead and sell for Q4 because I was struggling a little bit to deploy capital and got a little trigger happy on uh, on stuff. We can see as we roll into um, July and August right here, back to school kicks in. Now, back to school is fantastic. It's like a mini Q4, basically. It's like backpack season stuffs popping off left and right, basically. On that. So in July and August, you can see I had some pretty big days right here. I think August was my second highest month um, last month, last year. And that was a lot of merch to fill, backpacks, stuff popping off for back to school. I can't believe, guys, that I didn't do more sporting goods for like soccer season, football season, volleyball season, stuff like that. The past two years, I haven't done that with back to school, the fall sports. I'm going to do that this year, but definitely. So looking at some of the past Cupid charts and seller ramp data on this these products, I can see that I missed out a lot of opportunity the past two years with back to school right there. But either way, back to school is always like a mini Q4. It's pretty cool this month. Started to see some 
um, coaching students like really have a lot of success similar to the way that for those of you guys who watched the video from yesterday on my first million in sales, my first six figures profit, back to school was really the catalyst for kicking that off base. It was my first um, 15K profit month, basically back in back to school of 2021, August 2021, basically. And then August 22, I had another big month and a bunch of students were able to have big months too because velocity really picks up on products and especially stuff popping off, backpacks, et cetera. And have a lot of success merch filled with that. So I hope you guys watching this are excited for that back to school season in a couple months because it's going to be a good time basically with uh with that and then a little bit of a slowdown between august and september right here now we get into the major mistakes that i made basically right here so september was really really good for buying and i was able to load up a bunch of that product into fba and i actually in mid-october went ahead and got a warehouse right because i was like all right it's time to really really scale i was on vacation in october and like mid-october and i was buying a bunch of product and then right when i get home in early november and like late October, my restock limits are completely slashed by Amazon and I can't send in any product to FBA. And that really like puts me into a corner basically because I couldn't FBA any product, but it wasn't time for merchant fulfilled season yet, basically, which, so that's why my sales went down so much in November because sure, this product will move in December, but the problem is I can't FBA it because I don't have any restock limit slots and stuff wasn't selling quick enough, basically. So I ended up having tons of product in my warehouse like all the way throughout November and then was able to capitalize it on in, uh, in December as well. But the key was if I was able to like FBA all that stuff in late October or mainly early November, like I could have done so much more in December because I ran into like manpower constraints in terms of fulfilling all the demand in December. And if all of that, like if that same effort that went into merch filling had also gone into FBA stuff in November, I would have been able to do so much more revenue based. And that's a mistake I'm not going to make this year. But the mistake I made was speculating on products too much in like September, sending that into FBA. That product still did well. But the problem was in October, I was about two weeks late going hard sending stuff into FBA. I should have started buying heavy for Q4 in and like November, December in early October, but I started in mid October. And by the time I got back in late October, early November into the warehouse, I wasn't able to FBA any of that inventory. So that's why you can see my sales went down so much in November and then popped off crazy in December, but I could have done so much more if I was able to not only merch fill in December, which is what I did, but also have heavy, heavy, heavy FBA stock. Like, 10,000 units plus in uh, in FBA for December, it would have made uh, even at like six bucks average profit, which is low for that type of stock in December, that would have been an extra 60,000 um, profit base. And so that's the type of energy I'm gonna be on this year. I know that in early October, it's time to start and mid October at the latest, it's time to start FBAing heavily and that there's a good chance restock limits slots are cut in November. So that's something you guys really wanna be on top of basically because you can see my sales went crazy in December, which is a lot of merchant filling, but they could have gone even crazier if I had adequate FBA supply of product, which I didn't because I was about two weeks late in terms of like really starting to pump in inventory. You guys can see how December actually went. You can see it really kicks off around like, you know, December uh, 3rd to the 5th there. And then it, it peaks right around like December 15th. Um, and now you can see <laughs> it did 450K uh, trailing 38. So I think the peak was like 495 or something like that. I'm gonna do more than that this year. I know so much more. It two years in a row, I've gotten screwed with restock limits, and I'm not going to make that mistake again, basically. But yeah, it's, it's popping, guys. Like it's it's really crazy the type of money you can make. Like this was like eight thousand bucks profit in one day, um, basically, because in December the prices go up so much, and even that, like I was freaking out like intraday, basically, like going back and forth between like I am so screwed, how am I going to merge with all these products to like I am so rich, basically. It was like it was an emotional roller coaster, basically, with that. So. Lessons learned from this whole thing is that I need to start FBAing stuff heavily in early and mid-October. I'm not waiting till November um, and getting screwed by restock limits again, basically. I want to make sure that November 15th, I have a, a plan or already like 10 to 20,000 units um, in an FBA that are um, to be sold in November and early um, December. I executed Merch Field fantastic um, once again, second year in a row, basically. But um, the play, in my opinion, is like, don't get screwed by restock limits. FBA heavily in October. Good inventory that's profitable today that you're fine with selling today that has a good sell through because then you'll be able to keep your restock limits up to FBA stuff in early November, mid-November. You just got to make sure you have a really active sell through 
to combat those restock limit issues, basically, and then have merch field infrastructure prepared for December. So you can see it really, really pops up between like December 5th and December 15th, you know, two years in a row. The first year really changed my life, making 50 grand profit. This year I was able to make like 80,000 profit in December. I really wanted 100 and I totally would have had 100,000 um, plus profit if I hadn't made those mistakes, basically. So like merch fill, it's huge, but um, don't want to make the mistake of not being in stock FBA. Once again, restock limits um, were an issue with that, but I've seen two years in a row that happened. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. Basically, but the big thing is that you got a weather storm in February, January and February, because it's hard to buy. Then it gets easy to buy in March, April, May, really easy back to school. Then you got to start loading up for Q4 in um, October. And then it's really easy to execute heavily in November and December with Merchfield. I just also want to have that FBA stock in because I wasn't limited by the amount of times the product was selling. I was limited by the amount I had available at FBA and then eventually fulfilling that demand FBM right there. So I hope this stuff's helpful for you guys. If you want to see more of this like off the cuff documentation style stuff, um, let me know. But either way, I really appreciate you guys watching um, me and my story all the way through. If you want to hear the first part of it, check out the link in the description for uh, how I made $100,000 profit plus much more than that um, profit my first year with Amazon FBA. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.